Hello everyone. In this video, you will learn how to convert between the units of one system to the other using conversion factors, to understand what a measurement is and the relationship between uncertainty of a measurement and its significant figures, three, understand the rules of significant figures for a measurement and use them to perform mathematical calculations. Making measurements is a requirement for any scientific process. A measurement is a quantitative observation an experimenter makes using some device. Some examples of measurements are measuring the mass of an object or distance between two points or molarity of a solution, etc. A meaningful measurement always consists of two parts. A number describing the size of the physical quantity and a unit describing the type of the physical quantity. For example, mass of an object is 20.50 grams, distance between New York and Boston is 215 miles, the molarity of a given sodium chloride solution is 0.25 molar. The number and the unit are so dependent on each other that it is meaningless to use one without the other. The most widely used system of units by the scientists across the world is called the International System of Units. It is abbreviated as SI system in short. There are seven fundamental or base SI units. The following table shows various fundamental physical quantities and the corresponding SI units used to measure the physical quantity. For example, a mass of an object is measured in kilograms and abbreviated as kg. Length is measured in meters. Time is measured in seconds and so on. These seven units are called fundamental or base SI units. All the other units are derived from these fundamental units. For example, unit of velocity is meter per second which is derived from the units of length and time and similarly unit of acceleration is meter per second square also derived from the units of length and time. In order to express an extremely large or extremely small number we use prefixes placed before the SI unit to amplify the size of the unit. The prefix can either increase or decrease the size of the unit by several orders of magnitude. The following table shows the most common prefixes that we use in this course and you need to memorize these prefixes. Prefix giga increases the size of the unit by 10 to the 9 fold. Similarly, prefix milli decreases the size of the unit by 10 to the 3 fold. Let's take a look at an example. The storage space on a computer is 500 times 10 to the 9 bytes. The 10 to the 9 can be replaced by a prefix which is giga and written as 500 gigabytes. The average width of human hair is 8.5 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. The 10 to the negative 6 can be replaced by a prefix which is micro and written as 8.5 micrometers. Even though the SI system is the most widely used system of units, there are several alternative units as well. For example, to measure length, scientists use yard, feet, inch or mile in addition to the meters used in SI system. Therefore, it is important to learn how to convert between these units to be able to communicate the experimental results with scientific community at large. Just to let you know how important the unit conversion is, I give you an example of a real life story where NASA lost its million dollar spacecraft because of a unit conversion mistake. Please click on the links below to read more about this disaster. Now that we know how important the unit conversion is, let us learn the method we use to do the unit conversion. We use a method called as dimensional analysis to do the unit conversion. Dimensional analysis uses a conversion factor to convert a quantity expressed in one unit to an equivalent quantity in a different unit. 
conversion factor expresses the relationship between the two different units. To understand better how a conversion factor works, let us do an example problem. The height of Aspire Tower in Doha is 985 feet. Express this quantity in meters. To convert the height from feet to meters, we need to know the relationship between these two units, that is meters and feet. We call this equivalence relationship. Usually, this relationship will be provided to you. In this case, the equivalence relationship is 1 meter is equal to 3.28 feet. From the equivalence relationship, we can write two different conversion factors, both of them equals to 1. The two conversion factors that we can write are 1 meter per 3.28 feet or 3.28 feet per 1 meter. Since the value of conversion factor is equal to 1, if we multiply any number with either of these conversion factors, it will not change the value of that number. Now let's see how a conversion factor is used to convert feet into meters. We choose the conversion factor in such a way that it cancels the given unit and introduces the desired unit. In this problem, we know that the height of the Aspire Tower is 985 feet, which is the given unit, and we want its value in meters, which is the desired unit. Therefore, the conversion factor we use should cancel out the feet and introduce meters, that is, feet in the denominator and meters in the numerator. Therefore, we use 1 meter per 3.28 feet. We start with 985 feet, multiply it with 1 meter per 3.28 feet, that gives you 300.3 meters. The power of dimensional analysis becomes more apparent when we have multiple conversions to do. Let us solve another example problem to learn how to perform a multiple conversion. An internet cable costs $0.55 per feet. What is the price of 315 centimeters of this cable? Given information is 2.54 centimeters is equals to 1 inch and 12 inches is equal to 1 feet. We know the length of the cable in centimeters, which is the given unit, and we need the cost of the cable in dollars, which is the desired unit. So, we look for the conversion factors that convert centimeters into dollars. We can do this in three steps. First, we convert centimeters into inches, then inches into feet, and in the third step, we convert feet into dollars. Let's do these steps. In the first step, we convert centimeters into inches. The equivalence relationship that we will use is 2.54 centimeters is equals to 1 inch. We can write two conversion factors from this, 2.54 centimeters per inch or 1 inch per 2.54 centimeters. We start with 315 centimeters of the cable. To convert from centimeters to inches, we pick the conversion factor that cancels out the centimeter and introduces inches, that is the second one. 315 centimeters times 1 inch per 2.54 centimeter, centimeter centimeter gets cancelled out and we are left alone with inches. If you calculate this, we will end up getting 124.02 inches. At the end of first step, we have the length of the cable in inches. In the second step, we convert inches to feet. In this step, we start with 124.02 inches and we want it to be converted into feet. The conversion factor that we use should cancel the inches and introduce feet. That is, 1 feet per 12 inches. Inches, inches get cancelled and we introduce feet. We plug these values into the calculator to get 10.335 feet. At the end of second step, we have the length of the cable in feet. In the third step, we convert feet into dollars. We start with 10.335 feet 
and we want to end up with dollars. Therefore, the conversion factor that we need to choose should have feet in the denominator and dollars in the numerator, which is $0.55 per one feet. The feet and feet gets cancelled and the dollar is the leftover unit. If you plug in these values into the calculator, we would end up getting $5.68. Therefore, at the end of third step, we have cost of cable in dollars, which is the desired unit that we want. We can combine all three steps in one single conversion below. We start with 315 centimeters and multiply it with the first conversion factor, that is 1 inch per 2.54 centimeter. The centimeter and centimeter gets cancelled. Now my answer is in inches. Instead of plugging these values into the calculator, I now multiply it with the second conversion factor, that is 1 feet per 12 inches. Inches inches gets cancelled. Now my answer is in feet. Again, instead of plugging these values into the calculator, I now multiply it with the third conversion factor, which is $0.55 per feet. Feet and feet gets cancelled. The leftover unit is dollars, which is the desired unit. Now, if I plug all these values into the calculator, I end up getting $5.68, which is the same answer as above. Let us do one more problem before we finish off this topic. Example 3. Density of mercury is 13.6 grams per centimeter cube. What is its density in kilograms per meter cube? Given information is 1 meter is equals to 100 centimeters and 1 kilogram is equals to 1000 grams. Density of mercury is 13.6 grams per centimeter cube, which is the given unit and we need to calculate its density in kilograms per meter cube, which is the desired unit. We need to do two things here. First, convert grams into kilograms in the numerator and then convert centimeter cube into meter cube in the denominator. We start with 13.6 gram per centimeter cube. First, let us convert grams into kilograms in the numerator. That means grams should be cancelled and kilograms should be introduced. That is grams in the denominator and kilograms in the numerator. We know that for every kilogram, we have 1000 grams from the equivalence relationship. So the conversion factor that we are using is 1 kilogram per 1000 grams. We cancelled the grams, we introduced kilograms. Let's now move on to the second step. That is, convert the centimeter cube in the denominator into the meter cube. To do that, we need to multiply it with a conversion factor that has centimeter cube in the numerator and meter cube in the denominator. In order to find the relationship between meter cube and centimeter cube, we can start with the existing equivalence relationship. We know that 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeters. If I take cube on both sides, I would end up getting 1 meter cube is equal to 10 to the 6 centimeter cube. So the conversion factor is 10 to the 6 centimeter cube per 1 meter cube. Centimeter cube and centimeter cube gets cancelled. Meter cube is introduced into the denominator. Plugging all these values into the calculator, I would end up getting 1.36 times 10 to the 4 kilograms per meter cube. One of the most common mistakes students do is to use 100 centimeter cube per meter cube as the second conversion factor which is not the case.